Commodore. Oh. Commodore. So, Jason, you were at uh, OTS yesterday. This is my resting bitch face, there so I'll, I'll, I'll smile. This is the only way I can uh, smile. <laughs> Miles Garrett, not there. Yeah. Um, any scuttlebutt about that at all? Is there any reason? Like, there's no... No, it's I mean, not any anger with the team or anything. No, like I don't that, think right? so. I mean, next week's mandatory, so I assume it'll be there next week. I've right. said my piece on it. You yeah, know, I think G and I disagree on it. It's not about Miles. It has nothing to do with if Miles is going to be ready for the season. Of course, Miles is going to be ready for the season. My yeah. only point is, if you're leader of the team, you're leader of the defense. We all know what's at stake this year. We all know how important this season is. It's a new scheme. It's a new defensive coordinator. Just show up. Just be there. Yeah. And I kind of cut him a little bit of slack last week, thinking, okay, maybe he'll be there this week. Well, he wasn't here again. So. To me, that's not leadership. Yeah. Leadership is showing up and being there for your guys. I understand it's voluntary, yeah. but if it's important for everyone else to be there, it should be important enough for you. I don't care that anyone else is missing. I don't care if they're there or not. He's the one, if you're the leader of the defense, you need to be there. Oh, well, Watson you'd care about. But Watson, yeah, of yeah. course. Yeah, as the, Gee, as the yeah, offense You disagree leader. on that. You don't care that he's not there. Well, no, I think, I think also, too, you know, he did have a toe injury. Like, you know, he did have an injury um, coming off the Pro Bowl. I don't know. If, I, I expect him to be fine. Um, I just look at it, it. To me, it's not that big of a deal. Um, it wouldn't be that big of a deal if he was there to me because, you know, at the end of the But if you had your choice, be there or not be there, wouldn't you rather him be there? Sure. Okay. You know, sure. If, if, if it was a perfect world. Yeah. Well, yeah, I would like to have 100 percent attendance at these these different things. But I, I also understand and understanding the, the, the game. Um, you know, Jimmy Johnson once said, um, Everybody, I'm going to treat you fairly, but everybody ain't equal. If <laughs> Troy Aikman is in the back of the classroom and he's, uh, he's sleeping, I'm going to tell somebody to tap him on the shoulder and say, hey, wake Troy up. Right. But if you're a fifth round pick or you're an undrafted guy, I'm going to wake you up and tell you you cut. At the end of the day, there's always levels to it. It's, you know, obviously, if you, the, more, uh, the, the more prominent of a name you have, the more productive you have, the more leeway you have. It's just that way in life yeah. in general. Um, you know, I don't think it'll pay any any bearing on what whether the Browns will win championships or win games this year. You know, would you like to see them there? Sure, pro coaches probably will, but I don't think they're even tripping on it. Let's talk about some other things, Jason. We had heard last week maybe Deshaun Watson his first OTA wasn't the sharpest. Didn't go league. well. Yeah. Did it, how about yesterday? Did he's he better. Better. Yeah, he's better yesterday. I wasn't there last week, but from everyone I talked to, it, he was awful. Like yeah. you can't overestimate how bad he was last week much better yesterday connected with Goodwin on a couple of deep balls there's one of them right there uh That's seemed to go through catch. yeah it was a great catch uh he hit him on an earlier deep ball in a game I don't know it was pretty slow developing I don't know that it actually would have been Right. Uh, if that's it why he can't be carried away about any. Right, stuff. but yeah. but the throw is on target. Yeah, and that's what you're looking for right now. You know, in these seven on seven drills, and you know, we were talking with Mike about it last week, and he said it's sort of like a, a quarterback's pro day, and he's right. Yeah, and it's sort of like when Ohio State plays uh, Youngstown State, you better win by fifty. You better look good because there's no right. excuse not to. And he was better yesterday. He did throw the pick. He threw one into into triple coverage. Jacob Phillips picked him off and, and took it back. So there's a couple things here and there. He missed a couple throws here and there. But for the most part, he looks significantly better than what the reports were last week. And that's really what I spent most of the time watching yesterday right. was just Deshaun. That's the only thing I really wanted to see was how does he look? Where's the timing at? Is he hitting guys, particularly downfield? Alex Van Pelt talked after practice yesterday about chunk plays, throwing the ball down the field. It's something that's been missing. It's really a point of emphasis this year is driving the ball down the field and, and, and that those big play opportunities. And we saw that with Elijah Moore lining up all over the place in the slot outside. They're looking for opportunities to get him the ball, quick passes, let him create. Uh, I think that will translate. You're going to see that carry over into the season. Uh, just it, It's just a speed weapon that really they haven't had before. And so just that's just another little curious thing to watch as this goes is where does Moore really fit? He fits. But I'm just saying, where is the best use of, of his speed and how do you just get the ball in his hands and let him go make a play? Finally, Bull. Some speed. Finally, we got some speed. Now, when I was watching that play right there, I, you can always tell there's levels to this, man. This is, this is chess, not checkers. This dude just split the defense and ran. Look at this. Look at it. Ran right past somebody. Now, you, we can say this is practice. It is practice on shorts or whatever the case may be. I, I get that. But when you watch the separation that this guy has, I'm like, finally, we got somebody that can run past somebody. 
Now, when we when we talk about the deep game, I'm going to compare this a little bit to the Guardians. We talk about all the time how difficult it is for the Guardians to stream together hits and singles against power pitchers, dominant yeah. pitchers to score runs. The Cleveland Browns are a lot like the Guardians in, in, in a pass. When you watch the Browns offense, it was like pulling teeth to get chunk plays. You five yards sit down routes. Remember, we used to say they go go five wide just to throw a hitch to uh, you know Hooper. Yeah, right. You're like, dude, what are we doing? Is that the, we gonna open a game with that? Now you you talk about the emphasis is put on throwing the ball deep, spreading out the defense. You have to threaten people vertically in the league, not east and west, north and south, because once you can you can actually pinpoint and actually threaten those guys vertically. Now all the other stuff open up. Now you get to underneath routes, but yeah. when you consistently going under underneath to these little aspirin tabs and these little uh, these little check down Charlies that look good. Your completion percentage looks great, but you're not going to win no games in them big games when you talk about doing that. The Bengals and guys can when you hit, when they can hit Jamar Chase, that's devastating because now that's seven instead of three, or they, they stop you later on in the drive. Yeah, I mean, the big play has been missing from the Browns. That can make a huge difference. Obviously, it doesn't take a genius to, to know that big plays make it easier to score. I mean, you're going down the field quicker. The more plays it takes you to get down the field, the more chances of a, a penalty yes. or a bad play that, that sets you back. Jason, going back to yesterday specifically, besides Deshaun Watson, was there anything of note that happened Uh I don't know. Anything. The most curious thing I think was Denzel lining up in the slot on a number huh. of occasions. Okay. And he said after practice, that's something that'll probably continue into the season. So that's just something. I mean, we always just sort of assume that Newsom yeah. is going to be the slot corner, but uh, interesting. What sure. I, I, they're really, I don't have a good explanation for you. Other than, I mean, Ward got paid already, so yeah. maybe he doesn't care. <laughs> I, you know, yeah, right? I, 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 I think, Honestly, I think it's a new defensive coordinator, and yeah. he just wants to – I mean, so you see things. Schwartz was on the field yeah. during the plays. Like, I've, I've never seen that before. Like, he was, he was on the field standing next to the center while they oh, were running really? the plays. And he yeah. said, like, hey, he's new here. He wants to hear what they're saying. Right. He wants to make sure that they're – He's he's they're very much well. Yeah, and I Jim, like that. That's Jim Schwartz. Too, yeah. Jim Schwartz like is very that. much from. Uh, listen, this is a very short amount of time we've had around him. Yeah. But he's a feel guy. Like he needs to feel it. He likes to feel it. He's already said he likes to be on the sideline. Yeah. Uh, and I like that. I like the I like defensive that. coordinator to be on the sideline because he said he wants to be able to communicate with guys and talk to guys. Right. And he sure. wants. He said there's a difference when you look a guy in the eyes. You say, Hey, can you cover him? Yeah, I got him. Or Yeah, I got him. And like you could just just yeah. being there and being around them, touch and feel them. He's very much a touch field kind of coordinator, right. which, which I think is good. Our, and he could just be getting a look at Denzel yeah. in the slot. But that was one interesting thing that I that I know. Aren't most DCs on the sideline? A lot of them are, but not all of them. Yeah, Some I would definitely. I couldn't imagine being in the. I mean, you it know, used like, to be back in the day, the OC was always upstairs and the yeah. DC was always on the field. Right. Now it's sort of yeah. And if the coach, I mean, like the coach is an, is the OC essentially. So Alex Van Pelt could be in the. But Van Pelt's on the sideline. Right. I, I'm I, saying, but in theory, he could be. I like. But I, I think it's good for the guys, the coordinators, to be down there. I yeah. like my coordinator. I like the offensive guy in a box because he can kind of see the field a little bit better. Like he can get a bird's eye view, and he's like thinking about, okay, can I set this up over here? So, like, to me, standing on the sidelines is very difficult to see the game. Yeah, it's like it's it, no matter where it, where you are, unless you want to yeah. walk thirty yards down that way and get the angle. To, but straight on in the fifty yard line, it's yeah. just you you Sorry. you miss a lot of depth. Obviously, Stefanski's on the field. Uh, Alex Van Pelt has been on the field in the past, and Drew Petzing, the quarterback's coach, was in the booth. Yeah. Now, I'm, I, I would assume AVP is still on the sideline, even though he's right. got both titles next year. So, I don't know who on the offensive side will be the lead guy in the booth. Mm. I don't know. We'll have yeah, to wait and see. What's up, Mike? I want to throw one thing in there with the Denzel Ward in the slot and how Jim Schwartz talked about his approach to this defense next year. A. Ward got paid – and Craig, isn't he the smallest of their three? Emerson's the biggest, but Ward is a little smaller than, than mm -hmm. uh, Newsom, right? Mm -hmm. So theoretically speaking, G, and, and I wish Tyvis was here, we'll ask him on Wednesday, he would fit in the slot against opposing slot receivers, like physically matchup-wise, better than the other two. Is that a crazy uh, assumption? Well, well, here's the problem. When you're in the slot, you you got run responsibility. Like you you have leverage on these plays. Like you're in the you're in the run fit. Like so if you're in the slot, 
he, you depending on that guy to come up and make tackles. Sometimes you blitz from that area. Sometimes you're going to have to cover physical guys out of the backfield, like running backs. You got to be able to tackle. So Denzel Ward, to me, is a guy that's been injury prone a lot. Um, I, I, I think Schwartz, what he wants to do is he wants this to be, if, if say, for instance, you're, you're lining up and you got a, you got a, a, a snapshot of, of your corners. And if opposing offensive coordinators understand, okay, when we go to this formation, Denzel, Denzel Ward will be here. Right. That's 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 too much. You've given away a lot of tendencies where where you want to uh, line up for your strength, where you want to call the roll the coverage to. So if he has an opportunity to play those three guys, and those three guys are going to interchange different positions, you don't really know what their responsibility yeah. is going to be. So it's better to just be able to line up anywhere. And a lot of times when you're running people on and off the field, what happens if you get lined up incorrectly? Can and Denzel Ward doesn't know any slot. So now he's like, oh, I'm, we're screwed here. Uh, so I think he's just trying to cross train, make sure that everybody has a little versatility. And especially when it comes to third down and confusing people and teams. And he does a lot of that, like talks about how you, you want to confuse people in terms of their blocking <clears throat> schemes and what they want to run. If you can have everybody locked in and dialed in and just saying, okay, we can all play everything. Everybody knows everybody else's assignments. That gives you an extra added bonus on defense. That does make a lot of sense that you want to be everybody have the ability to be flexible to some degree. Plus, like it used to be like when you were the slot corner, you were a backup. And yeah. now really the slot corner is a starter. Schwartz plays at two four five, so they're going to have three yeah, cornerbacks I mean, on the field most plays, I would assume. I, I would think almost all the <clears> time, <throat> except for like goal line situations, fourth and inches, stuff like that. The Patriots, see, the Patriots started doing something. The Patriots started running their number one receiver from the slot, so it was yep. the, the Amendola's. It was it was uh, Edelman you know, and Julian Edelman. Um, and then they actually started running Gronk in the slot and Hernandez in the slot, and which was really a problem because now you got big guys that are out there that are large and physical that can still block. So a lot of people run their number one receivers in the slot position. So what happens if they do that? Now you got Denzel Ward who's getting a hundred million dollars out there on the guy. What if you want him to follow him around? What if you want to lock him down one on one? So it's almost like before your best pass rusher used to come from the blind side of the quarterback. Nowadays, people don't that don't really necessarily mean anything. Right, that's true. They'll just do. I'll take Miles Garrett and put him on the other side if I feel like it. Right, and it's just, so it, it's just it's different now. And one other thing worth mentioning. Yeah, uh, I forgot to mention off the top. We're talking about Deshaun. He did hit Elijah on a seam route in the red zone that Alex Van Pelt said made the hair on his arm stand up because they just haven't seen that from him to this nice. point. Mm. Obviously, Watson struggled. Quite it was a bit this last throw, year. right, Jason? You do have the throw. Yeah, this was yeah, the one that he was said it. Gave him, gave him goosebumps. Yeah, that was it. Quote. That was it. And that's he, a throw that the Browns never make. He fit it in a tight window, threw it over defender, just over a guy's hands. I didn't see who the defender was, but that it is like the throw. Emerson. And he said that's that's what made his made the hair on his arm stand up, because we just haven't seen that yet right. out of it, Deshaun. And well, and and it's you're starting to see it's coming. It's coming with. Again, him. it's practice. We don't want to go overboard, but right. that's the type of throw that like the great quarterbacks make. Yeah. And the rest Routinely. of the guys, wrote, the rest of the guys, and pretty much every Browns quarterback in in their recent history, can't make that throw. Don't try to make that throw. Right. If they do, they get picked or right. it gets tipped or whatever. Like, cause that's a throw that's got to be perfect. Yeah, yeah. And if you make throws like that, that's where you get those chunk plays you're talking about. Because those <clears throat> are plays that you can get a lot of yards after the catch, because you're already cutting towards the middle of the field and right. you're ahead of the defensive back. It was in stride on target right. yep. and more did not break his gate to make that catch. Right. He's in the end zone there. Had he been in the open field, that's a 15 yard pass that goes for 45, 50, right. maybe a touchdown depending on where they yeah, are. Yeah. And field. to G's point, it feels like, you know, even with Baker who was better than all the scrubs, the Browns had, but not good enough. Like it felt like every pass was like, we're falling down to catch it. Yeah. Like it's, it's, right? it's or we're going forward, They're going back towards the line to catch it. Right. You weren't here. You weren't here yesterday, uh, Jason. What did you make of his comments when he said um, he doesn't know if the rest is done? He he just says, "I want to get I get one percent better each and every day." 
Did you did you have a problem with it? Do or were you kind of shocked that like he he does he didn't come out and say it? Or do you like to approach? No, I think he's just, being honest. Yeah. I think he's on like he's not going to know until week one. Really, like right. this looks good, and we can spend five minutes talking about a seam route on seven on seven drills and OTAs in May, mm-hmm. but we're not going to know until the helmets are on right. and it matters in September. Yeah, what it, there's because, no pressure here because I'll tell you. He had some throws last training camp that we were like, wow. Yeah. Like, look at that. Right. And we didn't see any of that when he came, when, when it mattered. Well, well, in training camp, you know, you're not going to get hit. So right. that makes it a lot easier right. to throw the but ball. But just the way, and, and I was, the, I was one of them saying it, like yeah. ball comes out of his hands different than it does right. everybody else. And it, and it did. So, and, and that's why like, this is great. This is great. But yeah. let's wait and see. We need to right. see it in September too, and I think he's just being honest. Yeah, that he he just doesn't right. know, and he won't know until he knows. It, it's all it's all it, it gets you excited, and you, but ultimately it's all meaningless until the regular season. Because even in the preseason, okay, at least in the preseason you, you can get hit, so right. that's on your mind. But teams are not scheming no. up for you. No, it's very vanilla. At a lot of cases, you might be facing backup players who are not competing. You know, who are competing for backup jobs. Right. Until the game one against the Bengals, the best we're look. Not gonna know. The best look between now and the Bengals is probably going to be the the uh, joint practices with the Eagles. Frankly, right? Because but even in that, you, they don't hit the quarterback. But they, it's it's the it's the closest you get. Uh, it's a controlled chaos yes, type of sure. controlled fury. I, agree. I guess, and yeah. I, I I'm I'm with you. I'm just saying that's even I think to me a better gauge than the preseason of, yeah, of where things stand. Uh, with him, but we won't know for sure no, until no, week it, one. It, Real quick, the, G, are those open to the media? The, the joint, joint practices? Practice? Yeah. We got to yeah. find a way to get out there. Well, they're in Philly. Yeah, yeah. We got to find a way to get out. Steve Becker, Steve. you're from Philly. You like the Eagles. Steve, <laughs> just not, He doesn't live in Philly, though. What would he say? He doesn't live He's in Philly. He's got family in Philly. I'll sleep on Steve Becker's grandma's couch to be at those joint, back, it, the it, joint Packers. That'd be fire. Practices. That'd be fire. Me and G, road trip to Philly. Hey, Staying at Steve let, Becker's Steve Becker's grandma, if Steve has Living a grandma it. still, I hope he does. Yeah, I just, I, no, like he has family that lives old. in Philly. I'm not sure who it is. He'll text well, us in about 30 well, seconds. Aunt Ida. We'll stay with Aunt Ida. Aunt Ida. I think that's when I'm on vacation, so y'all have fun. Yeah, I think look, that's when we're It's his mom, not his grandma. When is it? What week? Uh, I don't remember. I'd have to look it last up. Last week in July remember. or something? No, 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 no. It's August. Do, do it's we, like the – I think it's – I actually think it is when we're on vacation, like okay. August 5th that All week. Right. Did, yeah. n- now, this is – I mean, obviously you can't tell, but did you see – did you see a difference in anything, right? Like, it's like losing weight. Like, like you, you wait for somebody else to be like, hey, are you losing weight? Then you'd be like, okay, it's working. <laughs> like, but, 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 like, until you hear that, no, you, you got to keep hit that gym. But with the Browns' offense, did you see a difference, like compared to like what you watched last? Like, is there is there some stuff you like? Wow, I haven't seen that play. Or no, honestly, I wasn't even really looking. I was really just watching four. Mm-hmm. That's really what I. The only thing I was yeah. watching the whole time the offense was on the field. I wasn't even watching when the backups were in. I can tell you, Dewan Jones is every bit as big as you think he is. Yeah. <laughs> just a massive Eclipse human being. In the middle of the he summer. would make you look small. Jim. Oh, listen, like, no, yeah. he's huge. <laughs> like, no, no, no. Yeah. Man, there's not many people I'd be like, oh yeah, he's crazy huge. No, he's really big.